from the EPAWA headquarters in South Allentown, Pennsylvania, it's time for Weather Weeklies, an informative video of the ins and outs of weather that affect you most in the EPAWA coverage area. The following segment is a weekly video blog, and the opinions of the forecaster do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the staff of Eastern PA Weather Authority LLC as a whole, nor its constituents. Without further ado, here is meteorologist Bobby Martris with Weather Weeklies. Good Sunday morning to another edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, February 28th, and we are ending, we are uh, reaching the end here of, of uh, winter, and so that would be the effective end of Weather Weeklies until we get back into next fall. But uh, right now we're, we're still looking at a couple storms this week that we're going to be taking a close eye on, especially around the 4th, and we'll show you that uh, in this video here. We're going to go over the long range table first. Long range table will be showing all the threats this week. Uh, we got the first one here on the second. This is actually Wednesday. This is a system that's going to be cutting to our northwest and bringing rain to uh, everywhere. Uh, there's a possibility that our northwest or western areas could end briefly as a period of, uh, of, of snow, but that would be very, very brief and maybe just give you a little coating or something like that. Uh, not, nothing that's uh, showing it to be a big deal. And that's only the GFS and the Canadian model showing that the European model is not thrilled. The next one on the fourth is one of interest. What this what this system here is going to do is set up the next one here on the fourth, and the fourth will be setting up the next one on the seventh if there was one. So uh, the system here on the fourth though is the one of interest because that's the one that's showing snow across uh, much of the mid Atlantic here in different forms. The GFS is not thrilled with this system. The Canadian is overly th well, actually the most thrilled farthest north with it. And the European model is pretty thrilled, but a little bit further south, it had done its overnight run. Uh, so it only hits uh, the southern third of our coverage area here with a pretty good snow and just some lighter stuff farther north. So we're going to keep an eye on this one here because this uh, this one has potential, depending on where that gradient sets up. Uh, when I talk about gradient, uh, you have uh, areas to the north here uh, across our coverage area that will be uh, the still on the cold side and the warm southeastern ridge on the southern side. The combination of the two... Uh, hitting up against each other will create a, a gradient and that will allow for some overrunning precipitation and it will be enhanced a lot of times when you have that difference in temperature that you're dealing with. Uh, this system here on the third, or excuse me, the fourth will actually set up another system here on the seventh, but the overnight guidance has lost this, which is typical. It goes back and forth at this range whether it wants it or not. Uh, the ensembles aren't really too thrilled overnight either, so uh, this might not occur, but it, it says that uh, you know if the cold air is too overwhelming, it may develop too far south anyway, so it's going to depend on what this system here does on the 4th, whether the system on the 7th actually comes to fruition. Another one listed here, the 10th or 12th, but there it might be, uh, it says right here that uh, we're going to reevaluate to see if the models keep the colder pattern of this potential. I don't think it does. It's looking more and more, like after we get around the 8th or so and beyond, we get pretty warm, and we get into real spring warmth, uh, no, and it, it, it hangs around for a while. So I don't know if it's a complete flip yet or it's something that's going to be like that for maybe a week or so and then it goes down again. I mean, there's a couple of different possibilities. I don't want to say it's a hermit change, but you got to look, look at what we're talking about here. Even if it does that for a week and then it gets colder the second half of March, you're running out of time here. I mean, you're talking about the middle of March here. Climatology is telling us once you get past it, I mean, you really, really are fighting a sun angle this time of year. You're really fighting uh, climatology in a sense that uh, you really don't get – I'm not saying you can't get snow. Uh, late in the late in March, uh, but uh, the setup's really not there for us to have some really Arctic plunges the second half of March here, at least not what we're looking at right now. So if you're going to have uh, cold and you're below average, it's going to be relative to what it is at that time of year. Okay, you might normal high might be 50, it might be still be, but it could be 45 and be below average. All right, so but 45 is too warm for snow. So keep that in mind. But we're seeing below average temperature here. Uh, that you know, that's what you're you're talking about. March above normal snowfall. If you have that on the on the fourth system, most areas get ab above normal for the month just with that one system, even if it's moderate, because you're not expecting that much snow in the month of March overall. All right. So we're keeping the above average snowfall. Depending on what these systems do here, will determine whether you get that. Uh, the below average temperatures, of course, are uh, looking at the month as a whole, and that's also relative to the what a normal temperature is so if you're saying well March wasn't really that cold we were in the 50 we were in the you know it, we were in the upper 40s to near 50 okay well your normal temperature if it's 55 is still below normal all right now here's here's what we're looking at that uh, 
into the long range here, some of the things that we look at observationally. A lot of people want to look at models and say the models are doing this, models are doing that. We look at observations first and see what makes sense. First thing here is the stratosphere. This is the split, ongoing split. So this will allow for the first couple weeks. Uh, this would argue the first two weeks of March would be colder. The second half would not because it's going to be consolidating over the pole again. All right, that would be the idea. Actually, uh, maybe past the 10th or so. It's saying that this would go back to being, the, as far as the stratosphere is concerned, this would go back to it being, uh, you know, uh, zonal or, you know, not, the stratosphere doesn't have an effect where it's going to keep cold air. And if it does, the lobes are over, over uh, the eastern sections here of uh, Europe. So it's, and, and Europe and Asia. So it's really not helping us here e either way. All right, the Madden Julian oscillation. So the stratosphere has no effect basically on our pattern. So we're not really going to worry about this anymore. Uh, and this is past the time of year where the stratosphere really helps you anyway. So we're going to get into the Madden-Julian oscillation. This is your dateline forcing. This allows for the, dig, uh, the bridges out west, the troughs in the east, and where that sets up and where the cold's going to come in and the cross-polar flow from Canada. Here's what it looks, at, looks like from the GFS perspective. Very aggressive with it going into phase eight and then eventually phase one. I don't think this is going to be right all season wrong. The European model, uh, European model, European model has been right with this, uh, and it's been showing uh, that we're going to have this week, when we're, we're a little warmer, we're backing into phase seven. Phase seven is a warm phase now for this time of year. Okay, it's no longer cold like it was in January. Now, we have it backing into phase seven. This is uh, this week, so the reason we're getting warmer. And then we get colder again next week as we go into phase eight, and this is the first through the seventh of March. Once you get to the eighth, look what it does. It goes right into the circle of death. Well, if it goes in a circle of death, the Madden Julian oscillation no longer has an influence on the pattern. So it can stay cold when it's in phase eight. And I'm going to go over to this chain. This is what March looks like when you're in phase eight. It's cold. And this is what it's going to look like next week, cold. Here's what phase one looks like. If the GFS was right, which I don't think it is, and it stays into phase one, and this is the beginning of first week of March, second week of March. If it's going to be second week of March going into phase one, then it doesn't match itself. It doesn't match itself because if you are in phase one in March, you are still cold. Along these coasts, say much of the nation is cold, not just the East Coast. So what I what's all going to determine, uh, you know, whether or the Madden-Julian oscillation is going to actually drive this right now. If it ends up like the European model said, which I do think it does, you're up through the first week of March, you're looking at below normal temperatures, the a couple shots at snow there, and then after that, you're back to warm again. Because the amount of Julian oscillation goes into the circle of death, which means the MGO no longer has, a, has an effect on the pattern, which means you can take this here with uh, phase eight, phase one and throw these out the window. It doesn't matter what it does. Whatever the pattern wants to do, El Nino is going to be driving the pattern, and that means it's going to be warm again. That's what that means. Okay. Now, uh, the, one of the things that supports the first week of March being colder and it is the Southern Oscillation Index. We had this tank here back here on the 22nd of, uh, and 23rd of February. Now, this is a, um, a pressure... It's a it's a taking the pressure differences between Tahiti and Darwin, Australia. Here's Darwin, Australia. Tahiti is out here. So you're, you're measuring the pressure differences between here and here, and that's going to allow for uh, if if you have a, a severely negative number here like this, this is indicating uh, that you're going to have a big amplification to the pattern, which combined with this, if you have this in phase eight, which means you're going to have a very deep trough in the eastern United States. That's what this tells us. So this is all the observational stuff, okay? So observations tell us that beyond the 7th, beyond the 7th, this should continue unless the European model is correct, which I think it is. So this and this and this and this, all these things combined here are telling me that uh, we're at least through the 7th and then, and the, and then throw in the ensembles. At least through the 7th, we're going to be uh, an 8th. We're going to have the colder regime and a chance for snow. After that, it doesn't look like we will. Here's the storm potentials this week. This is looking at uh, the first storm on Wednesday. Kind of comes up like this. Cuts to our wet northwest. Again, we're on the warm side of the system. Once you have a, a low track in this direction, you can see the reds here. This is uh, above freezing. Um, uh, up at the upper levels, 850 millibars. So that means you're going to have warm air coming in here. This is going to be rain, and you're not uh, dealing with any snow. There are some indications that on the back end of this system, once the system pulls up in this direction like this, that you would have some rain changing to snow on the very tail end, very thin, narrow, narrow band of it. Uh, not really thrilled about that idea because the European model is not liking it and has not liked it the entire time. The next one we're looking at here is the system here on Friday. 
Again, we're going to have a system that's going to be cutting across the and, and following a thermal gradient from pretty much west to east here, kind of coming out along like this. Here's where this system is here in this point in this graph, and it's going to exit right around, right around Norfolk, Virginia, somewhere right around there, and then head out in this direction like this in this northeasterly direction. All right, so you got this here. This is the, your your storm system heading off to the north uh, east northeast. This is all snow on the north side here because of the way it's tracking. Now, the European model is further south of this. We showed that before, uh, and the, it only keeps most of the snow across this portion right here. and doesn't have anything up here, which would just be a thrill for all of you guys in northeastern PA that have had just a wonderful, wonderful snow this year. That's sarcasm. Uh, you know, the snow up here in northeastern PA barely got over into double digits in a lot of places. And uh, we can see this a long time ago up in northeastern PA, but if this way, if the European model is correct, it's telling you that winter has been over and stop wishing. Because <laughs> it's just going to be right down here in the southern areas, and that's it, if the European model is correct. Uh, the European ensembles, however, are a little bit more thrilled further north, so we'll just uh, we'll keep uh, keep an eye on this and see what it does. Uh, the GFS is... GFS is playing World's Wars Waldo with this. Doesn't even have a system, so it's yeah. I don't know what it's doing, to be honest with you. But um, you know, we'll see how this goes in the in the in the coming days of where it tracks. Here is the European Ensemble. Again, uh, it still takes it off of um, off of the Outer Banks of North Carolina here. Uh, keeps the precipitation shield for the most part locked to our southern areas here, but it does have. Uh, precipitation coming for this would be in the form of snow farther north as well. Not going to be a lot of snow. Again, this would be a light to moderate event for as far the north if the European model is correct. It would be a moderate event to perhaps major in some areas if the, if the Canadian is correct. And if the GFS is correct, you wouldn't have anything at all. So a lot of things to still discuss here with this system. And we really don't have a good handle on it yet. This is only Sunday. Uh, so we're talking about a system Friday. And of course, what happens on Wednesday sets up Friday. So uh, it's 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 all speculation at this point. We have a pretty good idea, good idea what Wednesday is going to do. Seems that all we time. Every, you ever notice that every time the it seems like the, it's a rainstorm, everybody has a great handle on it. But when it comes to a snowstorm, it's all over the place. But it all depends on where that gradient sets up. It's all going to depend on where that gradient sets up because if it sets up uh, farther to the south, the gradient's all the way down here. Uh, system's going to track further south. If it's up a little bit further north across D.C., Baltimore, like this, you're going to get a big snowstorm up here in the interior. All depends where I, where the gradient sets up, and a, and a few, you know, a few uh, miles here this way or that way, north and south is going to make a big difference. And then you have the next system here on the seventh. Again, there's the, there's not very much agreement. This is the ensembles from yesterday. I can tell you there's only probably half of these ensembles here are actually thrilled with the seventh, and they're more concentrated out here uh, for the overnight guidance for the for the seventh. Not very thrilled. This is what it was showing yesterday with this system. Today it doesn't show anything at all on the mean. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's another system that would be out here that uh, all winter the trend has been. Anything showing out here out to sea or further southeast ends up coming northwest, so you have to keep an eye on it. Our few ensemble members are still thrilled with it, uh, but, uh, you know, we're not ready to say one's not going to hit or one is going to hit because the second sets up the fourth, fourth sets up the second. All right. After this point, it looks like bring on spring. So if you are looking at... Uh, Looking at spring uh, coming early, yeah, this might be your year. It might be your year. We're looking at that on the on, on every piece of model uh, guidance as far as the ensembles are concerned. Nothing disagrees with each other. So I think we have a pretty good idea that once we get to the uh, eighth and beyond, at least for that next week, we're going to be above normal temperatures. Uh, you can, of course, track the uh, storms this week on our EPA WA custom models page. Go all the way up to the far right of the uh, – the far top right of the page here in the navigation bar you'll see a, a spot that says weather models you can see that right here uh, you can actually look at any of our uh, snowfall maps and then uh, as the models come in and it comes in in real time that is a free product you can check that out uh, of course we're not going to be using this much more for, for snow pretty soon because we don't have much snow left but as soon as the last threats for snow occur, it looks like we're not going to be getting any deep cold or snow anymore. Uh, we're just going to be dealing with the daily, with the weekly public long-range update, which is a written update, not the uh, weather weeklies anymore, until we get back in the next fall. We are still doing this next week yet, uh, but I think that it might be a chance that might be the last one of the season. We'll see. I'm Eastern PA Weather Authority Meteorologist Bobby Marcher. That is this edition of Weather Weeklies for February 28, 2016. Have a great Sunday.